Hi, I'm Sam Meredith. Today we're taking a closer look at the economy of the Philippines by talking to CEO of World Economics, Ed Jones. So firstly, Ed, we've seen this week the IMF praise the Philippine government for its prudent macroeconomic management, which has seen the country deliver favourable growth in spite of external headwinds. The IMF went on to forecast 6.2% GDP growth for the Philippines in 2015. But to what extent is this kind of growth sustainable? The IMF are right to lavish praise on the Philippines government for their macroeconomic management. The Philippines is showing really solid levels of growth. The IMF is predicting 6.2%, which is congruent with the findings of the Philippine Sales Managers Index, which was tracking at 804 in August. This is broadly comparable to the IMF estimate of 6.2%. What we have noticed in the SMI reports is that monthly sales growth has remained very strong for the past 10 months, with no signs of falling. This is obviously a good indicator for GDP. When breaking the economy down into the services and manufacturing sectors, we have also found that both sectors are showing similar levels of solid growth. Another remarkable feature of the Philippines is the robust levels of positive business sentiment. Our monthly survey polls a panel of well over 600 businesses, and almost every single one is expressing increased levels of confidence, which really is quite remarkable. In short, all the data we have indicates that growth is certainly tracking at about 6.2%, as the IMF suggests, and unless there have been any unforeseen disasters, there's no reason why this level of growth shouldn't continue into 2016. Okay, well, according to the Philippine Statistics Authority, the jobless rate fell from 6.7% this time last year to 6.5%. The Economic Planning Secretary cited the agricultural sector as a concern, though, with the debilitating impact of El Nino. But to what extent is this likely to hurt the jobless rate moving forwards? We keep a close eye on national statistics offices around the world as sometimes they can be woefully understaffed and underfunded. However, the facility, Philippines office does a good job with their resources, and I trust what they say. Our SMI indicators for staffing levels have shown a similar slight easing in the unemployment rate. Or to put it another way, the level of jobs growth has been increasing at quite a pace. There was a slowdown at the end of 2014 and in quarter one 2015, but since April this year, employment opportunities really have opened up and the future is certainly bright, especially when you consider the high levels of business confidence I previously mentioned. The Philippines, unfortunately, is in an area of the world which is really susceptible to the effects of El Niños. I remember speaking to your colleague almost two years ago discussing the impact of Hurricane Haiyan, and as I said at the time, the loss of life is tragic, but the Filipino economy is very resilient to these events. The agricultural sector is obviously the one area that will suffer the most, but on a macroeconomic level, agriculture accounts for around 11% of GDP. In the event of a typhoon, services and manufacturing industries will suffer a temporary setback in the face of these events, but they do recover quickly and the overall economic impact is generally slight. And lastly, the Philippine Stock Exchange Index, which is largely a barometer for the economy's fundamentals, has been forecast to rise if U.S. Federal Reserve Chair Janet Yellen does not raise interest rates in the upcoming meeting. What are your expectations, and are you forecasting a rate hike in the U.S. based on the current macroeconomic conditions? This is the trillion-dollar question, literally. If we all knew what Janet Yellen is going to do, then we'd be very rich indeed. On a serious note, though, the U.S. economy is doing exceptionally well, with year-on-year -year growth expected to be about 2.3% in quarter three. Manufacturing and service sectors are both growing at comparable levels. Staffing levels have increased every month for two years, and on the face of it, now would be a good time to raise interest rates. However, the U.S. SMI in August noted caution there was a surprise fall in monthly sales far bigger than a regular seasonal variation. Prices charged growth for goods and services slowed a bit more, and business confidence levels took a sharp fall. Admittedly, confidence is still at very high levels, but the drop in the index values was enough to send a note of caution. I hope this was a one-off season anomaly, but all eyes will be on the September data release on the 23rd of this month to see if this trend continued. 
Of course, there has been a lot of turmoil in the markets recently with the news of China's economic slowdown taking hold. World Economics first wrote about slowdown in Chinese growth in June 2014 and the deflationary pressures building up from July last year. The economic growth in China has now met modest levels, and although it appears this could be easing slightly, these will all be things that Janet Yellen will consider ahead of next week's meeting. Personally, I suspect she will delay the the raising of rates to wait and see what happens with China and the knock-on effects to the US economy. Thank you, Ed. Be sure to check back with Jugoscopy for more updates throughout the week. Goodbye for now. 